This is Bumper to Bumper Radio, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident. With the best automotive information for your vehicle, Bumper to Bumper, helping you and your car feel better. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining us on Bumper to Bumper Radio again this Saturday morning. I'm Matt Allen, your KTAR car guy, and Dave Riccio is not in the studio today. He is out at the uh, Good Guys Car Show out at Westworld. And uh, so Dave will be calling in a little bit, see what's going on out there. And uh, again, we're here every single Saturday from 11 to noon right here on 92.3 KTAR, helping you with your car. And uh, that's really what it's all about here on Bumper to Bumper Radio is is helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience, whether that's uh, taking care of the maintenance on your car, maybe buying a new one, you have questions, maybe you're working on a car at home and aren't quite sure how to handle it or if you can handle the repair, we can help you. So we encourage you to get involved and give us a call at 602-277-5827. 602-277-KTAR. And if you're shy, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Nobody can see you. Or if you're really shy, you can always text in, or maybe you can't call because you're at work texting. Uh, You can get a hold of us at 411-923. And uh, today I've brought in some help. Uh, My friend Greg LaFonsi. Did I say that right? You said it right. Good morning. <laughs> it's about time. Good morning, Greg. Thank you. And Greg is one of the bumper-to-bumper shops uh, uh, in Chandler, Automotive Diagnostic Specialties off I-10 and Chandler Boulevard, a little bit, a little bit east. Yep, three blocks right? east I-10. I thought you said two miles. No. I, was, I had two miles in my head for some reason. Three blocks. Just a, a little bit, a little bit, a uh, little bit east. And and uh, Greg is a, a good guy to come in today. Your shop does a lot of hot rod work, but you do just as much uh, regular everyday driver. But I, do you have a little bit of that reputation for? Uh, we re- do probably about thirty percent of our work now is uh, classic cars and hot rods. And we're not talking just a car that's got a gold license plate. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Some of those are classics, but uh, uh, some pretty serious hot rods. Well, yeah, I was. What was it? About two weeks ago, just out cruising around and, and happened to be in your neighborhood, so I. I popped in, and, and of course, along with the the Audi and the Mazda 626 and the Honda Accord, then I see a, a sand rail there with some twin turbo uh, Corvette, whatever, LS6 or something like that. Yeah, it's a twin turbo. <laughs> <laughs> LS1. So, something screaming a lot of horsepower. And, uh, you know, I saw that you were doing an alignment on some 57 Chevy. I'd be afraid to, I was afraid to even get close to the car because of my luck, something would happen to it. But uh, I think that car is probably better than an annual salary of uh <laughs> yeah that car had quite a quite a few dollars uh in it yeah what um so you started off there in 1995 is that correct 1995 yep and i think you started kind of like i that was around the same time i started but uh similar starting out working on cars in the gas station and and learn as you go or tell me a little bit about well, I had some automotive school when I was a teenager, but right. when I started my business, I was a full hands-on, one-man shop, and just kind of grew it from there, and now I have to be more businessman than repair guy. <laughs> Sometimes you like, I'm putting you on the spot, too, I can tell, Greg, but uh, it, it's nice to, uh, if we could go hide in the shop sometimes, because that certainly is the, the easier job Yes. Uh, on some days than others. Some days I don't want to be in the shop. I guess that's the day when the shop has Chevettes and and <laughs> in other cars that we may not want to not want may not want to be working on as a technician. Uh but there's days certainly in the office where uh maybe an upset customer or we got to uh, heck I don't know deal with insurance and all the different things that come along. So, but one of the things I was mentioning, speaking of being in the shop, is you guys have a dyno, and there's an engine dyno where you mount the engine up, and, and there's no car around it. But you have a chassis dyno, and that's and when I was there the other day, you're using that to work on the sand rail and get that tuning and high performance thing all dialed in for how that guy's going to be running that car at the sand dunes. But that's not necessarily what that's all about. You use that uh, tracking down problems on normal everyday drivers, especially maybe some diesel trucks and and stuff that you work on? Correct. We originally purchased it for diagnostics and drivability problems so we could simulate hill climbs, people that are going up to Flagstaff for the weekend, and when they hit a certain hill, their vehicle loses power. 
So that's why we purchased it, and then it kind of grew into the performance stuff, and now we can use it for that also, remapping computers. So, you know, that's the, the one of the hard things. We have a car in the shop, and the, and the customer will say, well, when I'm going up Flagstaff, or even where I am, we, you know, on 7th Street, people drive up that hill on 7th Street and Thunderbirds. It's just a short grade, but they'll say, when I do this, it misfires, or when I'm going up a hill. And, and around town, there is no place to go find a hill where you can continually drive. So what you're able to do is just dial up the, that thing's got some kind of magnet or, or something causing the rear wheels, kind of like the emission station, to just be loaded. And, and you've got to power through that and drive, and you can simulate that. If you want to drive 10 miles, I guess you just you never have to necessarily leave the shop in certain cases. It's Yeah, it's a that. giant electromagnet, and we can drive the car out there, um, try and increase, increase the load to bring on the misfire that the customer's explaining to us. Sometimes it's very hard to find, so if we can get it on the chassis dyno with the scanner hooked up, with an oscilloscope hooked up, we have a good chance of finding it without uh, crashing into anybody on the street. Uh, you know, I like to use medical analogies, but I guess that's a little bit like the stress test. You've got the car on the treadmill, you got <laughs> everything hooked up to it, and uh, you run. That's a good way to put it. And you run and watch the EKG and watch what's... Uh, Coming out the tailpipe, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if you want to watch that on a stress test. <laughs> you can put it under max load and definitely bring out the problems. And dialed in. So that that's some of the neat things at the shop. And, and uh, great to have you on board, Greg, at Bumper to Bumper. I've known you for several years and uh, just one of the one of the good shops. So hopefully you can we'll get you on the spot here and answer some some car related questions a little bit later and Dave is going to be out or Dave is out at the good guys car show and that's one thing we get some questions about too whether it's someone putting their boat away for the summer or not away for the summer away for the winter or pulling maybe the hot rod out and that's what a lot of people are it's been warm and been nice and people are getting those cars out or maybe they're a little bit late getting getting uh getting the car that maybe you don't drive too much in the summertime because it doesn't have air conditioner it's an older classic or or something like that. And, and so you park these cars and they sit for several months. What are some of the things that we should be doing? I, mean, I, I get questions all the time about how should I treat the gas or or can I just start it? Should I go fill it with fuel? What do I do? And first thing well, I'll ask you, Greg, is, is the fuel. You got a half a tank of gas. What, is there something they should be doing to to start this thing up? or, or Well, bef before they put it away, you want to put fuel stabilizer in it. Go drive it around the block a few times to make sure that if it's fuel injected, it's gone through the pump, the lines, the injectors, and the same thing with the carburetor. You want that conditioned fuel to be in the carburetor so that when you go to fire it back up six months from now, it's not all varnished up. And then probably your best bet is when you do start it up after it's been sitting, take it to the gas station and fill it up with premium. Try and bring that octane back up in the gas. Well, because the gas that's been sitting in there for, for what, however many months is now... It starts losing octane after after some time in varnishing, and, and I always tell people if the gas isn't just nasty, put a few gallons of premium on top of it, blend it through, get it running, and so we get it running. And I guess the first thing you don't want to do is just put your foot on the brake and throw it and drive. You might end up through the garage wall or something. You want to let it idle for a little bit. I mean, the last thing this is kind of like measure twice, cut once. You, you don't want to just jump in it and go. You need to think about it. You're going to have plenty of time to be driving this car around. So start it up once you've got your fuel situation organized. Before you even start it, of course, you have to have a good battery. Check the coolant level. Make sure it's got the oil is full. But just don't get in it and go run. Start it up. Let it idle for, I don't know, three, four, five minutes. Get to temperature. Get the, get the get water Get it up to hot. running temperature. Make sure you don't have any fluid leaks. It's been sitting for months. You may have had a seal dry up especially on older cars. And uh, if everything's good, then you want to go putz it around the block, get all the fluid circulating through the differential transmission before you uh, start hammering on the gas pedal. Well, and I guess, you know, as we're sitting here talking, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this doesn't just apply to the hot rod guy. This applies to the, you know, the guy from Sun City or, well, we say Sun City, the, the snowbird, if you will, or even the the temporary resident that just likes to enjoy the, the, the time out here in the fall and in the winter, you could park your three-year-old Cadillac or your Porsche or whatever other car you have, and, and it's the same kind of thing. Probably on a brand-new car, you're not going to be out there checking the fluids. and everything. You still want to fire it up, let it run, get some clean fuel in it, and go drive. 
but on your hot rod, the other thing is you don't want to be getting just jumping in the thing and going. Cruise around the block, like you said, then come back, let it sit again, cool back down, check those fluids, and, and uh, in the in the car should be good to go for the the season. Hopefully, especially if it was put away right with the stabilizers and everything, get your tire pressure set. So, Dave is. Uh, out there at the show so he'll be calling in a minute we've got open phones at 602-277-5827-602-277 ktr and whether it's a, a, a car question with a hot rod uh new car anything we can help you with please give us a call and we'll be right back it's the good guys 16th southwest nationals at westworld in scottsdale november 15th through the 17th this is the can't miss event of the season check out over 3,000 classic american vehicles that are giant show and shot including hot rods customs muscle cars and trucks and don't miss the champions arena visit vendor exhibits and shop the swap meet and cars for sale corral plus enjoy free fun stuff for the kids for tickets and details visit good-guys.com good guys celebrating 30 years of cool cars cool people good times Next to your family, there's nothing more precious than your castle, right? Kaiko Roofing understands that, which is why we are crazy about quality and protecting you, your loved ones, and your biggest investment. Don't wait for an emergency at your castle. If your roof is more than 10 years old, have the trusted pros at Kaiko Roofing give you a free inspection today. Flat, foam, tile, or shingle, Kaiko handles them all. From a small leak to a complete new roof, Kaiko has you covered. At Kaiko, we're proud to install peace of mind by using only the finest materials with the most skilled workers. All Backed by the industry's best owner's pride guarantee. Since 1994, Kaiko has repaired or replaced tens of thousands of valley roofs with over 50% of our business coming from referrals or repeat customers. In fact, over 98% of our customers say they would refer us to a friend or family member. For a free checkup and financing options, call 602-944-4600 or go to KaikoRoofing.com for more details. Kaiko Roofing. We're crazy about quality. There have been so many changes in Phoenix over the past couple of decades, but one thing has not changed in all that time. Kurtz, family owned and operated, Kurtz Auto Repair has been reliably servicing and repairing vehicles for Valley car owners for over 24 years. Just one block east of I-17 at 22nd Avenue and Bell, Kurtz has done it all with a perfect Better Business Bureau record. For service, call 602-588-2878 or check them out online at mycarhurts.com. Gas or diesel, foreign or domestic, if your car hurts, take it to Kurtz. This is Bumper to Bumper, News Talk 92.3, KTAR. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen, along with my friend Greg LaFonsi from ADS, which is Automotive Diagnostic Specialties in Chandler, right off of I-10, just a couple blocks east. And uh, Dave Ricky was kind of playing hooky today. He got the easy assignment. He's out at the Good Guys uh Rod and Custom Hot Rod Show out at Westworld, which uh, is looking like it's shaping up to be a nice day to be out there. So if you're looking for something to do, Westworld is the place to be. And I don't uh, think it matters if uh, you're a car guy or not. It's uh, a lot of fun for the kids and, and the whole family. What's going on out there, Dave? Well, in years past, you've got, you definitely got the easy job. I'd rather be out here than sit in the studio, man. There's so much going on. It's a great day. I'm sitting out here with John Drummond, uh, who was just telling me that he's, he's, he'd rather do this with me than you. So, what do you think, John? Uh, yeah, we definitely got the A team out here. The B team's back in the studio. <laughs> watch yourself. Watch yourself. <laughs> you know, there is so hey, much uh, going on. You know, the, the thing that I like the best every time is the autocross. I come here to see the autocross. I mean, there's a lot of great cars, a lot that I fall in love with. John, you've been doing this forever. What is your favorite thing, and what do you think people are happiest to see out here? Well, you know, this show is hard to pick one thing because it's it's such a big event. It's grown into one of our top five events of the year. I mean, the swap meet, it totally encompasses on the perimeter of this polo field that goes all the way around. I mean, you can find heavy valve covers in there. You can find turnkey cars in there. And then you've got our good guys' top 12 cars of the year. Now, you get this. Over 50,000 show cars came through our gates this year to participate in our shows. We've got the top 12 of all 50,000 here displayed over by the Barrett-Jackson tent. And then, like you said, the autocross is going on. We've got our finals of the year here. So we've got the top 24 guys from all over the country. I'm talking some guys from Canada even shooting it out on the autocross course. So lots to see and do, Dave. 
Well, there's a ton of family stuff, kids stuff going on. And, uh, I mean, everywhere I look, there's kids and families. And you guys got a lot of stuff out here for the kids? Oh, yeah, definitely. Good Guys is all about family-friendly activity. We've got model car make and take. And what that is is our friends at Ravel Model Company, they give us a huge pile of models in the box, brand new. And then the kids get to snap the kits together while they're here at the show and take home a little model with them. We've got face painting. We've got clowns. We've got all kinds of good stuff for the little ones out here. I bet there's some kind of uh, all kinds of uh, turkey on a stick and food and, and all, all the other good <laughs> stuff too, huh? I'm always thinking about food, Matt. <laughs> well, Peter, Peter. Well, I won't say what Peter said. Never mind. <laughs> well, there's. I mean, show and shine. There's over 300 classic cars out here. Muscle cars. I mean, muscle cars is what I like seeing. 300? What are you sh- you're shorting? 3,000 is what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah you're <laughs> shorting us 2,700 cars, brother. There's no parking left out here. It's crazy. It's jammed to the rafters. There's 3,000 cars on hand. So if you dig American iron, I'm talking early vintage American iron, this is definitely it. Um, Dave, um, I know you're a muscle car guy. Tell us a little bit about your muscle car uh, fantasy. <laughs> My muscle car <laughs> fantasy? Keep well, it clean, you know, I, Dave. I, I, Keep it clean. Me. I tried to get on the track with my Honda Element over there at the autocross, <laughs> and they just laughed at me. <laughs> Dave, they I weren't think... the only ones laughing at you. <laughs> you got to be really confident to drive a Honda Element. <laughs> I was going to say, Dave, I, th- I think that uh, you get laughed at quite a bit uh, on on a regular basis. So, but that's okay. Like you said, confidence with the Honda Element. <laughs> well, so, I, uh, I got a. I got a question for you guys. What's been going on down here in the Valley lately as far as car stuff goes on? Because, you know, we're good guys is out there doing our national circuit. We come here twice a year to Westworld. What's happening in the Valley as far as the automotive scene? Well, you know, I think it's it's the time. There's always something going on at the pavilions, and, and this is the time of year and and has been maybe the last month where where people are pulling the hot rods out we're starting to see everything on the freeway up in uh north scottsdale we had the cruise on central not too long ago so the hot rods are out the weather is here for that for that kind of car and uh as far as exactly what's going i don't know but i see those cars all that type of car and, and people dragging those things out of the garage on a regular basis greg in your shop you're seeing is that the trend we're full of them the last two weeks because everybody's getting them out the weather's getting nice they can uh, drive their old classics that don't have air conditioning and go have some fun yeah and you know on my way down uh, down the 51 this morning coming to the studios uh, there was a lot of traffic and then i just noted you know going north and i noticed there must have been a line of uh 70s chevy's trucks caravanning and, and they've got to be going out to the good guy show up there at westworld there there must have been a uh, half or mi- half a mile or more of cars just cruising up the freeway, headed headed uh, headed up there. Everybody wants to go out and see. So, like I said, you don't have to have that classic car to to get in on that. It it. Well, even if you, I mean, even if you're not a car guy, I mean, you know, and you you get out here and you're gonna see a car that you love that just speaks to you, and uh, you don't have to be a car guy to come out here and enjoy this. I mean, it's great, and there's some people that are diehard car people, but uh, you know, there's a I mean, it's just it's it's a sight to see, and it's an event. It's an event, so there's families and fun, and just good to be out and be in the culture. Yeah, and be careful, I guess. Maybe it's good time to leave the checkbook at home. <laughs> right, it's coming yeah, out of your wallet that's ready to burn a hole. Just bring it down here and hit the spot, me. Yeah. You know what else is out here? You know what else we got out here? What do you got? A lot of we got a lot of cougars, man. There are some <laughs> hot, hot Scottsdale women out here, dude. I'm talking like you know the the. Super good fitting designer jeans. Um, bolt, they've got a lot of bolt on aftermarket equipment, if you know what I mean. It's, it's happening. Oh boy, we've come to a whole new level on bumper to bumper, I guess. I, Dave, on second thought, well, not as I am glad you're the one that's out there because when you get called in the office, I won't be with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, again, thanks for uh, checking in, Dave. I know I'm going to head up there after the show and see what kind of see what I can find and and, and what's going on. It, it's always a good time. So, well, maybe we should think about going in and on a hot ride together. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I'll blow. It. I have a problem. There's a disconnect between my my brain and the throttle side of my body. Whether it's my right wrist for the twist or my right foot, there's just. 
there, there's <laughs> something that doesn't connect. I'm I, I'm not quite mature enough for that right now. <laughs> Well, thanks for having us. If you want to get out to the show, it's a, it's a heck of a time. All right, Dave. We'll see you uh, next week. And, John, thank you. Hey, <laughs> thank you. I'm going on a cougar hunt. See All you right. next time. <laughs> <laughs> Mercury cougar, that is. There's got to be a lot of Fords out there, right? I don't know, Greg. I don't know how we uh... – it's hard hard to follow that one, I guess, right? <laughs> so do you have any hot rods yourself? Do you drive any, any have any uh, um, cool cars? The only cool one I have right now is a uh, 87 uh, Chevy truck that's pretty pretty juiced up. It's about 630 horsepower. Ooh. See, I, I've never been an American car muscle guy. I mean, I like them and have had friends that have them. I'm, a, I'm the import guy. I like the old... Uh, old Volkswagens and in, in low and slow, I guess, you know, just uh, a cruiser or a sports car. I mean, I came a little bit of sports car and racing background, uh, working with Porsche and, and mechanicals. So I like a lot of the show, a lot of the go besides just the show, but I know out there there's a lot of show and, and go. So we'll be back in just a second. We're going to have, uh, we've got some open line 602-277-5827. And of course, text message us at 411-923 if you want to participate. KTAR. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen, your KTAR car guy, along with uh, my friend Greg LaFonsi from ADS, which is Automotive Diagnostic Specialties, and he's just one of the fine shops you can find at bumper to bumper radio.com. So if you don't have a relationship with a shop and you are looking for one, and, and if you don't have one, you really should be looking for one, right, Greg? I mean, you, absolutely. It, it's, it's something that you don't want to be making that decision on the side of the road when you've got a tow truck driver telling you to go to his buddy shop, or you've got some guy schlepping you a battery in a parking lot that you may or may not want to buy. Uh, so, so having that relationship and having that go-to guy, maybe it's one near your office, maybe it's one near, near home, or maybe it's one of each so that, uh, you're comfortable going in and you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, am I being told the right thing or what should I believe, or I don't really know these guys. So bumper to bumper radio.com is a good place to start. And we've got open line 602-277-5827 at 602 602- Two seven seven K T A R. If you have a question about your car, anything we can help you with, maybe a new car purchase, don't night quite know what to do with a repair recommendation or have a weird problem you're trying to tackle yourself or just don't know how to talk to the shop we can help you with that so don't be shy. And we've got an ever patient Dana from Phoenix on the phone that has a question about a two thousand one Chevy S ten. Dana, what can we help you with and thanks for holding. Well, thank you. Yeah, the reason I was calling, it's a vehicle I picked up a little while ago and um, has some lights that come on intermittently, mostly on rather than off in the dash. And um, it has to do, I'm told, with the electronic brake control module. Okay. What, and, what does the light say? Oh, gosh. It's just it's the brake lights. You know, it shows emergency brake light uh, being on. It shows anti-light, anti-lock brake. Uh, light coming on, and I took it to a, a good brake shop that I'm I've used for quite a while, and they told me it was the um, uh, electronic brake control module. Okay. And um, I was told that with the module not being effective, I essentially don't have anti-lock brakes, which doesn't really bother me that much. Um, but is that true? Yes, I, you know I can't speak exactly because we haven't we haven't looked at the car, but that's typically right. typically going to be the case. If your car, you're going to have two different brake lights, and you set them both. You're going to have an orange light, which is going to be warning, and then you're going to have a red light, which typically, if you see on the dash, it means stop. When you have a problem with the ABS controller, the red light always comes on, like it's like it would if you left the parking brake on. Um, so, of course, you don't want to drive with the parking brake on. That's why it's red. Stop, get that parking brake off so you don't burn up the brakes. But when the ABS control module fails, it is typically just going to revert back to a standard, traditional, or conventional brake system without ABS. The car will operate and function normally, just depending on the failure. Greg, I don't... I don't uh, 
No, you're I've right ne- on. It's... I've never seen them. Now, we have them fail where they don't turn on the check engine light, but they hang open, and you can lose some brake pressure. And, and uh, Ford has quite a bit of those where you know, the, the brake pedal is bleeding down as if there's a master cylinder problem, and it's really the anti-lock controller. But that's an internal failure where I suspect on your car it's an electronic failure. And those can be expensive to replace. There's some people that will want to replace the whole control unit, but I know that we've fixed several in our shop. They have circuit board problems, and you can actually take the the electronic part off, and there's a series of magnets in there that control the valves internally. So we can take the, the electronics off and actually fix the electronical portion, and you can still operate the car with the electronic portion removed from the car. You've got to cover it up, make sure dirt doesn't get in where these... Where, where it bolts back up there. And, and like I said, we can we can fix those a lot of times. So if you don't want to spend, it's probably a few hundred dollars. It, it's probably just fine to drive it like that. Although I hate to drive a car or have a car. It's kind of like the check engine line. Oh, don't worry about it. Right? You hear that, day, Eric, Greg? All the time. Uh, you know, the other shop said don't worry about it. I like when they say the dealer said don't worry about it. It's like, really? Are you kidding me? But the the reason I don't like that is because you don't know when you have another problem. It doesn't change colors. It doesn't raise its hand and say there's something else wrong. That that's the one one of the disadvantages of, of not not fixing the uh, you know the problem. But let it ride and you should be. Well, you may have a true hydraulic failure down the road. You may not know it until it's too late because your lights are already on. You may go to press the brake pedal, and with no warning, now your pedal's going to the floor. So. My advice yeah. would be to get it repaired. It's a 2001. I mean, it, it's probably not some hoopty ride. It's a it, it's a it, it's a good car still, and, and it's still what I would call a newer car, and uh, it, it certainly may be worth fixing. So we appreciate the call. We're going to go with Lynn, who has a something right up your alley, maybe Greg, 2007 Mustang Shelby. Lynn, what can we help you with? Hi, thank you for the show, first time caller. Uh, I have a 2007 Mustang, and speaking about the weird and the unknown, <laughs> my car, I put, uh, I went to Costco two days ago, uh, you know, because my gas light will turn on when I'm running low, you know, it's a little uh, orange tank uh, that would shine on my on my dashboard, so I went to Costco, filled it up, and my needle only moved to read a fourth of a tank, yet I put, like, almost $35 in it. And that was two days ago. And it's been reading a fourth of a tank only till today, this morning. It went all the way over to, you know, to the full line. So I, this has never happened. So any idea? Well, you might just have a, a glitch, which, it, you know, if this was the first time it happened, it, I doubt it. It's probably going to happen again. And, and what you have in there, I guess my easiest analogy is, in the dining room, you've got a, or whatever room, the, the dimmer switch. And, and there's a rheostat in there connected to a float that's rising and lowering as the fuel level is, is filled or drops down as you burn it. And there's probably just a bad spot on there where uh, there's a short, so it, it just goes and thinks, that's well, that's the resistance at a quarter of a tank, but it's really full. And then you get down past that bad spot on the sending unit, and then, bam, it's registering the way it should be. That's probably what it is. Now, you could have, um, you know, General Motors products have problems with the dashboard, the dash instrument cluster itself failing that causes the gauges not to work. And there is some testing that we can do called sweeping the gauges with a scan tool and make the, we could make the gauge read a quarter tank or make it read five eighths or command it to through the computer system. But my uh, problem is this is the case where you probably do want to kill the messenger, the, the, the tank uh, sending unit is sending the wrong signal. Agreed, Greg? Yes. Yes. Most common. (laughs) And I don't know on that particular model if the sending unit needs to be replaced as part of the fuel pump. Oftentimes the fuel pump and fuel sending unit are modular. It's a whole assembly. And and sometimes you can buy just the part, depending on the mileage on the car. If it were well over 100,000 miles and I had a fuel tank problem, I would definitely be replacing the fuel pump as an assembly because of the... The economy is a scale with the labor. You've got to pull the fuel tank out more than likely. Uh, there, there's big advantages of the labor because, again, if it's over 100,000 miles, you're going to be replacing that pump anyway. So hopefully that helps you. And if you're in Phoenix, uh, we've got great shops. Again, bumper to bumper radiocom if you're looking for one or not quite sure 
where to take your car. I'm sure you can find somebody there. So we appreciate the call in. And we're going to go with uh, Chad in Mesa, who has a 1999 Tahoe. Chad, what can we help you with? Yeah, I bought this Tahoe, and it uh, needed some front-end work on it. Um, I had a friend, uh, the family, that was going to do all the repairs. And uh, so I went and bought all the, the new parts for it. Well, he recently passed away with cancer. And uh, so now I got all these parts, and every time I call a shop, uh, you know, they say they don't install customer parts. I mean, is there anybody around anymore that, you know, that will, you know, install customer parts? Well... You know, there, I'm sure there are some people, and, and there's a couple reasons. I guess I'll tell you why we don't do that. It's, Greg and I were talking about that a little bit be, before the show. But the, when when you supply a part and something goes wrong, just the simplest way, let's just say we bring that car into our shop and, and we start taking all apart, and here's this pile of parts in the corner. And then we go to install something, and it's not the right part. Now we're in trouble. We've got a, we've, we're tying up a rack. We've got a technician that's standing around doing nothing. And we've either got to get you to get the right part or we've got to start then sourcing out the parts to, to put on there. So that, that's one of the problems. And if, if, if we're doing all the work, then we're responsible for everything. And if I put that ball joint in your truck or that control arm, or, and, and let's just say it breaks three or four months from now, you're going to be upset with me uh, or maybe not with me, but then there's the question of who's warranty in this car. You brought the parts, but there's something wrong. Am I supposed to uh, provide the labor or not if something doesn't fit right? It's just all kinds of problems. And if I can be married to it, I'm going to be married and I'll, and I'll be responsible for for everything. One of the other, probably the primary reason uh, that we don't do it is the quality of the parts oftentimes. I've had, you know, you go ahead and make that exception, Greg. What happens? You get bit. You get bit. <laughs> you know, we've had uh, people bring in a fuel pump, for example. Put it in, car doesn't even start. Bad fuel pump right out of the box, and it happens. Well, if I'm supplying the parts, that's my baby. But if you're supplying the part, guess what? The clock starts over again. You got to pay pay to redo the job. So that that would be one of the things is the quality. So you might find a shop, try one of the bumper to bumper guys in Mesa, explain to them what happened, take in, go visit them, don't call them because when you call over the phone with that, it just doesn't come out right. It doesn't sound right. It sounds like someone just calling around looking for the the lowest or uh, cheapest way to do something, which is not always the right way. So call, go around, go go visit them, bring your parts with you, and if you've got good parts. Uh, they'll they'll probably maybe work with you. If you don't, maybe they'll tell you, just go return those and let us do all the work. Let us inspect the car. Make sure we're replacing what needs to be replaced and uh, make sure you're not getting something more than you need or nothing less than what you really do. And then we can stand behind the job 100% when we do it. That would be my advice. So 602-277-5827 if you want to get involved in the in the show, please do that. And if you've got something, nothing to do this afternoon, maybe make a attempt to get out to the Good Guys Car Show up there at Westworld and uh, check out some cool stuff. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Greg LaFonsi of Automotive Diagnostic Specialties. Long name, right? But we have a short, simple goal. Customer satisfaction is our number one priority, and everything else takes care of itself. Bumper to Bumper Radio approved. ADS is a family-owned and operated state-of-the-art repair facility that has an expert staff that for the second straight year has earned the coveted AAA Top Shop Award as one of the best shops in the nation. Just east of I-10 on Channel Boulevard. Find us at AutomotiveDiagnosticSpecialties.com. After 14 years in the States, mostly spent here in the Valley, I was getting bloody frustrated with the treatment I was receiving from dealerships on the maintenance and repairs of my vehicles. I finally reached out to a friend who told me I was crazy not to try Virginia Auto Service. Being a mom with a busy schedule, children and work, I took my friend's advice and gave Virginia a try. What a refreshing difference. From the first step through their doors, their staff was accommodating and understanding. Robert explained in plain English what I needed to have done, but also why. They went out of their way to make sure that the experience was convenient with door-to-door -door shuttle service by a lovely man named Bergie. Several years and a number of visits later, the experience is always the same. They tell me what is necessary right now and what is not. This is Victoria, and I don't know much about cars, but I do know that from boot to bonnet, Virginia Auto Service knows how to take care of their customers. Check them out online at virginiaautoservice.com. 
After 40 years of exploding scoreboards, blaring soundtracks, screaming fans, the loudest thing out here is likely to be your golf slacks. Hey, can somebody quiet that bird? Who better than Jerry Colangelo knows what a historic championship experience feels like. And now, he wants to create one for you. To reserve your tee time at the legendary Wigwam, call 623-935-9414 or visit wigwamgolf.com. And for an extra 10% off anything in the pro shop, just tell them Jerry sent you. My pappy said, son, you're going to drive me to drinking if you don't stop driving that hot rod Lincoln. Bumper to Bumper on News Talk 92.3 KTAR. Welcome back to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I'm Matt Allen. In here with my friend Greg LaFonsi and Dave Riccio is a little bit playing hooky. We got him on the line earlier out from the Good Guys Car Show at Westworld. So if you're looking for something to do that is deaf and you're a car guy, even not a car guy, that is a good place to be. And, you know, Greg, we usually come back in and say good morning. And this is the time of day where I'm answering the phone at the shop. I'm not sure if I should say good morning, good afternoon, good day. You know, I say good morning. I feel lazy. It's already almost noon, and we're <laughs> we're we're saying good morning. So uh, good morning's good. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's I'm kind of moving slow today. It feels like uh, it's a little cloudy out. You can get up late. Yeah, get up late on a day like today. We work hard during the week. We deserve a a day to be a little bit lazier. But as always, we're here every Saturday from eleven to noon on Bumper to Bumper Radio to help you with anything that you might need help with on your car. And if you want to get involved with the show, have a question, anything we can help you with, you can reach us at 602-277-5827. You can reach us at bumper to bumper radiocom There's a contact link there if you have a question or if you're looking for a shop. There's a, a great list. And uh, we've got a couple calls up here. Greg, we're going to try David. We're going to go with our European skills here in a 2003 VW Beetle. David, what can we help you with today? Uh, my daughter has a 2003 Beetle, and uh, when she gets below a quarter of a tank and she's on the freeway, sometimes it'll, like, hesitate momentarily. Probably a pickup problem. Yeah, I guess the – so it's all, it's pretty consistent that after a certain point on the fuel tank it's going to happen a lot, or, or how consistent can we make this happen? It's fairly consistent. So she just – her current plan is – Keep it above a quarter of a tank. Right. Well, that's not a bad idea. Sometimes, anyway, I guess it'll keep her keep her from running out of fuel. But the way that fuel system works, and and in most cars, fuel injected cars, now there's a high pressure fuel pump, and that's in the gas tank. And it's and just like the woman with the Mustang a little bit ago, it's an assembly. In most cases, it's the fuel pump sending unit or the fuel gauge sending unit that's giving the command to the to the dashboard for the for the gauge. And then there's a fuel pump, and it has a. Some of them have a filter or a sock on there that's going to filter the fuel, and that's dangling from, from the top of the tank or mounted in the top of the tank, and it goes down to the, the lowest point, and then usually there's a baffle or something around to keep the fuel from sloshing. So, between the the steel lines and where the pump is, there's a rubber hose. So what we've seen in a lot of cases, those rubber hoses will split. And I think even in the Volkswagens, and it's not really a rubber hose. It's like a accordion plastic, almost like a silly straw, uh, or uh, you know the well. It's an accordion. You can right. see, you know, I get it stretches, and uh, and those get hard and brittle with the different fuels. We and we see sometimes different fuel problems in the time of year when they change fuels. It aggravates the the fuel system sometimes, and. Uh, but you see those split, so it, it's what it's doing is it's it gets below a certain level and it's sucking air, or she, maybe she turns and it and it sucks a little bit of air as the fuel sloshes from one side to the other, and and so like Greg said, it's probably just a pickup problem. It's just not getting all the fuel. So it's one of those cases. The Beetles, I think you can access the fuel the uh, fuel pump through the back seat. It's not as easy as I make it sound. Some cars you have to drop the tank down. It just just depends. Uh, if we can make it happen, it shouldn't be too bad to uh, to try and figure out what the problem is. If those intermittent problems, the best thing to do if you have an intermittent is keep notes and understand when it's happening and try to have that information for the shop so we can best duplicate that. And bring it into the shop with the fuel at that quarter tank so we can <laughs> find the problem. Yeah, don't bring it in full and say it happens with the quarter tank. So. Uh, good call, and if you, again, if you're looking for a shop to tackle that, bumper to bumper radio dot com probably 
plenty of people that can help you there. So we're going to go right along that European alley again. And I'm a little nervous on this one, 84 Mercedes 280 from Allen in Glendale. Allen, what can we help you with? Yeah, as uh, you said, you're a little nervous on it. It's a gray market, and my concern is I just <laughs> bought it, like, this year. I haven't ran it through emissions, and the only thing it has on it is an EGR valve and a catalytic converter. I'm wondering if it's going to need anything more on it, and how do I find out about that? Well, you know, Greg, Greg do you like to do testing on cars before they go to emissions? Um, or usually we'll t um, tell them to go ahead and take it through and see how they how they pass. Well, and that's what I was going to do. I wouldn't go in there raising red flag going, hey, I got a gray market car. What do you think I need? Uh, sometimes you get away with just depending on how, how educated or how astute that inspector is. My advice would be take your $27 or whatever the test fee is and quietly just go, go through emissions and see what they have to say is what I would do. Don't, don't, don't draw any 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 unnecessary attention to the car. Go through the test, and and then they're going to tell you it's missing this or it needs that, or maybe you got lucky and the thing just blew with flying colors. I would you know, but I wouldn't go out and attempt to make a bunch of repairs to it. I think does that one have to go on the rollers, or is that old enough? Do you know, Greg? Uh, no, that will have to go on the rollers. Eighty four. Eighty four. Yes. Yeah. So. The old exhaust pipe test yeah so you want to make sure it's got some good fuel in it go drive it uh you know we had a car the other day that failed emissions horribly all we did to fix it was drive it you you know blow it out there is something to be said about that make sure you take it into the test nice and hot warmed up and uh keep it running in line maybe even be the car before you when they're testing that one elevate your idle up 15 1600 rpms just to keep it warm keep the cattle converter lit up and uh just go through and let them tell you what you need. That would be, that's my best advice for you, Alan. We appreciate the call. And George in Queen Creek got a Cadillac Eldorado, I think. What can we help you with on your caddy, George? Well, it, it isn't mine. It's a friend of mine, and uh, she bought it, and uh, a young lady, and uh, it got hot on her. So the, her father-in-law had her take it to this garage in Apache Junction. And uh, he didn't want to pay for a diagnostic test, so he told him to put a radiator and a water pump on it. Well, they did that. She got in a car and drove a mile, and it was a Stanley steamer. Uh, as it turned out, then she was, she was told that she had a uh, bad head gasket. So is... Where where do you start checking uh, for this problem, and what is it is the going cost on a head ga uh, gasket for a Cadillac Eldorado 2000? Okay, well we've got a couple. That's like a such a loaded topic. We could go off on for another hour about several things there. The diagnostic test. <laughs> you absolutely want to get the diagnostic <laughs> yeah, test so you can get the right be, parts put in. Yeah, and be careful of steering the repair. Telling somebody. You know that kind of goes along the lines of I have my own parts. Here's what I want to have done. We 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 don't like to do that. So we won't beat up on that too much. But to where you start on an overheating car, we're going to do a pressure test first. We got to make sure that the vehicle's got the system has got integrity to hold water in it. So we're going to do a pressure test and make sure that there's no external leaks. We may or may not notice anything internally, like a head gasket or something like or an intake leak, with a with the with just a pressure test. The next, and we're going to at least check the oil, make sure there's no water in the oil. If there's no leaks and the system seems to be holding water, then we're going to do what's called a block test, and we're going to look for hydrocarbons in the exhaust, or exhaust in the radiator, hydrocarbons coming out of the radiator. So we have a tool that we can test, a fluid that changes color with the presence of hydrocarbons, or we might use a gas analyzer. Third test we might do on a difficult occasion is do a cylinder leak down test where we remove all the spark plugs, get the cylinders on top dead center, and then we're going to pressurize and look for air leaks coming out of the radiator. So you've got to narrow that down. Those, those are three different ways to do that. Overheating problem can be caused by, you've, now the other problem is once you've identified if you've got a blown head gasket or something, now you've got to find out what caused it. Do you have a radiator fan that's not working? Do you have a plugged radiator? Did you have a water pump leaking? So there's always the cause are the problem, you have what broke, and then what caused it to break, and we've got to identify both of those. 
As far as the cost, some of those I know we won't even do a head gasket on. Some of those North Star engines, you're, you're just opening up a can of worms. So you need to find a good shop, ask them the questions, and they'll be straight with you and give you the honest answers. And that's, that's the best you can do is go have a conversation with somebody and go in and do it. And maybe a good place to start is bumper to bumper radio.com. Find yourself a shop. So good luck with that. And maybe let us know how that turns out. Greg, thanks for coming in today and helping out a little bit. And uh, Thanks for having me. And it's good to have you. ADS, Automotive Diagnostic, I-10 and Chandler. And we will see you next week. Thanks for joining.